What's up guys? You're probably wondering Facebook ads or Google ads, which one is right for your business? That is something we're going to talk about today. Uh, there are two totally different platforms. They have a lot of the same features, a lot of the same characteristics and the way you actually develop those out to build out your campaigns on those platforms is very similar, but overall the type of clients and the intent of the visitors are very, very different. So we're going to jump into that today. We're going to talk about Google ads versus Facebook ads. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and roll right into it. All right, so you guys may have used Facebook ads before. You may have boosted a post or maybe even done a Google Smart campaign. But today, what I wanna to talk to you guys about is Google ads versus Facebook ads. I'm actually doing more of the expert mode or the real ads platforms on both of those two companies, on Google and on Facebook. But before we do that, I really need you guys to support me and these videos that I'm making and smash that like button. It's good for the algorithm and also hit the subscribe button so you get notified and make sure you hit the little bell too, but you get notified of all the videos that we're putting out because we're doing awesome content. We're gonna continue to push out content. My team is growing. I got amazing people. If you've seen the Project Grow Show coming on the team and we're just gonna continue to improve. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so Google ads and Facebook ads, what's the difference? The easiest way that I can summarize the difference between the two platforms is Google is demand fulfillment and Facebook is demand creation. That doesn't always apply. There's always exceptions to every rule, but that's just the general rule that I follow when I'm building out Google ads or Facebook ads, as I wanna understand what my client and what the intent of my client actually is. If I have a innovative product and I'm trying to get it out to the marketplace, and there's not a lot of people that know about this product yet, and there's not a demand for it, then going with Facebook and actually advertising that product, whether it's a heated, you know, neck massager or whatever it is, I'm gonna put that on Facebook because there's a, a demand that I need to create. I need to educate the market. I need to expose the market to what this is because they probably are not searching for it. But if I have a carpet cleaning business and you spill wine on your rug or you have dogs and you haven't had your carpet cleaning in a year, what are you gonna do? Well, the stats don't lie. About 97% of people are gonna start with Google. They're gonna go to Google and they're typing carpet cleaner near me, best carpet cleaner near me, cheap carpet cleaning, carpet cleaning machine, whatever that is, they're gonna put those keywords into their, into their Google search and then it's gonna populate an ad. And not just one ad, but three ads. And then below that, you're gonna have your actual maps, your Google Maps, which you can also put an ad in, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then below that's your organic listings, and then typically at the bottom of the page, again, is three more ads. And so what you're gonna do is you're actually getting very high on somebody's intent level. They need somebody to come clean their carpets quickly. They want it done maybe that day, the following day, or within a week, and usually at the most within a couple weeks. But with Facebook, even if you have a carpet cleaning ad, Maybe you popped up on their timeline and it was convenient for them. You have some sort of special or promotional deal, an offer that is irresistible, and that's why they decided to call you, but they weren't actively searching for that specific service that you're offering or product that you're offering. So that's really the main fundamental that I want you to understand between Facebook and Google is demand fulfillment versus demand creation. Demand creation is very, very important, especially with products that nobody knows when there's not as much people searching it with courses, a lot of different services that are out there. You wanna create the demand for your service, like I'm gonna be doing a course. Um, that is a really great place. And then if you have an auto repair business or you have a carpet cleaner or you're a contractor doing roofing or solar, uh, or maybe you're an insurance agent, people are looking for an insurance agent near them, like a State Farm ins insurance agent, you wanna be able to focus on fulfilling that demand. And then when it comes into Google and understanding the difference between what Google ads offer and Facebook offers is Google has less targeting options in terms of how you can target their personality and their behaviors, unlike Facebook. Facebook allows you to target by 97 different data points. If you have a job, if you have kids, what kind of job title, what Facebook groups you like, what are your interests, what are your hobbies, uh, where you live geographically has over 97 of them. I can't list them all out, but there's a lot of different targeting options, which is really nice when you're utilizing Facebook ads. With Google, you can do some basic stuff like age demographics and income to a certain extent, but you don't have as much control. What you're targeting is more of the behavior and more of the intent of the user. So you're looking for somebody that's looking for a local carpet cleaner, or you're looking for somebody that's looking for a residential roofer near them. Those are the specific keywords that you're gonna use. 
What I like about Google Ads, which is really effective, and you know, Google Ads does cost a little bit more, but what I like about Google Ads is some of the other features that they offer. You can actually get on all of their other sites and partner sites like YouTube, Blogger, Gmail, and they have thousands and thousands, I don't know the exact number, but they have thousands of other partner websites that you can actually list yourself on and put ads on, on what they call the display network or their partner network. Facebook does have a similar feature. They have an audience network and they also own Instagram and some other companies so you can get ads on their other platforms. But uh, Google has a much broader range of websites and can saturate more of the marketplace and reach more people for you. So I like Google because of that. It is more expensive. I've done the numbers, I've done the research. Let's just use this as an example. If you have a roofing company, if you're gonna run Google ads, it's gonna cost you between two and $300, depending on where you're at in the country, to generate a qualified lead. And by what I mean by lead is a phone call or a form entry or some sort of contact inquiry from that business. Maybe it's a live chat. With Facebook, what I've been seeing is I can actually generate that same lead, maybe not as high of an intent, I'm gonna have to scrub through more of them, but for about 30 to $50. And so even though the quality isn't quite as high because the intent isn't as high, it's a lot cheaper to bring in a volume lead of, of leads. Now the differences between those two as well on Google and Facebook in terms of the quality of those leads, the people that are on Google are looking for it right now. If you don't answer the phone when you get that Google lead or you don't answer their email quickly, they're just gonna go to the next ad down on the list and then the next ad down on the list. And a lot of people, especially your competitors, are not answering their phones, trust me. I see thousands of calls a month coming in and a lot of people don't answer. It's probably 60 to 70% of people don't answer their phones. So if you answer your phones and you answer them professionally and you start your brand off the right way, you're gonna have a very high chance of getting that customer. With Facebook, people are more browsing around. They're just kind of shopping, they're looking at things and you may have got something like a video ad or some sort of image that really caught their attention and got them to put their information in, but their intent isn't as high. If you don't follow up with that lead in like five to 10, at the most 30 minutes at the very most, the chances of you converting that into a deal is very slim to none. We've been running a lot of these leads through Facebook for the last few months and we keep seeing this being a reoccurring problem with contractors, with all the niches and industries of people not following up quick enough. So it's important that on both platforms that you follow up quickly, but on Google that you just gotta answer the phone because with Facebook leads, you are going to have to dial them out. So depending on how much availability you have in your time, if you just want incoming phone calls, Google's probably the way to go. You're gonna need to have a system on the back end to make sure that you always answer those calls and then you put them into a database and you can nurture those relationships and build up that database over time because what you're paying for on top of the actual ads and those forms and those live chats and those calls is the database of information of clients, potential clients. And if you could build that database, there's money, there's value behind that. And so Facebook is the same way. You can build a Facebook database and start emailing people and staying in contact and building those relationships and nurturing those relationships over a period of time. So I hope that explains it. There's a lot there. Um, for you guys to kind of uncover, but I just wanted you to understand what the difference was between Google ads and Facebook ads, demand fulfillment, demand creation, depending on the type of service offering that you have. If you're on a smaller budget, it's probably better for you to do uh, Facebook ads. Now, keep in mind, there are a lot of people that have done Facebook boosting because you know Facebook really pushed the boosting of posts, but the targeting, once again, is a lot more limited. So with Google, you know you, have, you don't have as many data points to target people by, and on the Facebook ads platform, you have a ton of things that you can target people by, 97 different data points, and even I've even heard some things that there are other ways to even reach further, but with the boosting of a post, you, bas you basically have your location, your age, maybe a couple interests, but that's about as far as it goes. So you really aren't utilizing the full capability and optimization of Facebook ads just by boosting posts. So I wouldn't throw my money at a Facebook boosted post. I would put it into the ads platform. If you wanna get into that and, and start to see some more of that stuff, you can go to business.facebook.com, start there. Make sure that your campaigns are very specific. I want you guys to do that on both, on Google and, and Facebook, is make sure that you break your campaigns into specific services. If you're a general contractor, create a specific campaign for Roseville, Roseville uh, construction or Roseville roof repair or Roseville pool design or Rose, whatever it is, you wanna get targeted in each one of those campaigns and then you're gonna have groups inside of that. So I don't wanna go into the weeds on this one. That's a video, another video for another day, but I just wanted you guys to understand that, have that foundation of when to use Facebook and when to use Google. They're both great. They both have their value, but you gotta understand when and where. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
please make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe and introduce yourself, drop a comment, let me know if this helped you guys out. If you were looking for this kind of information, I'm just glad that you found this channel. So thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And as always, keep looking up.